Hi, I'm Larry, and you're watching UAV TV. Today we're talking about drones, science fair projects, and some pretty significant crashes that resulted from our bad planning. So stay tuned. Hey, if you like the content of this video, help us out and click on the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon for notification of newly released videos and be on the lookout for upcoming giveaways. Today we're talking about science fair projects. How many of you have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, friend of friends, whatever that have come to you at some time in your life and asked you for some help with a science fair project? Well, that happened to me just recently with my grandson, Joseph. He knows that we're into drones. In fact, he has his own racing drone and he flies it around very proficiently, a lot better than I do actually, which is unfortunate because he's only been flying it about a tenth of the time I have. But nevertheless, the little guy asked me if I could help him with this science fair project, which would involve parachutes, drones, and the relationship between the altitude of a dropped parachute of a fixed weight and how long it would take to hit the ground. Here at UAV, we're all about involving drones with education. That's what we're all about, trying to unite all genres and possibly introduce drones to some more people in education in a positive way. You know, Joe was gonna build the parachutes and get everything ready that way. All of his input was in there. We figured that what we could do for altitude was use a 400 foot piece of paracord that would be anchored to the ground and when it reached its 400 foot limit, we'd just go ahead and drop it using one of the, drop, one, one of the sides of the drop on the octocopter and let that fall to the ground and then just let the uh, octocopter hold its position at that point, keeping the altitude the same and also its position the same. And then that would give us a few seconds to get, you know, spun up and go ahead and drop the parachutes, timing them as they, as they descended. We had figured out everything we needed to do to make this a really good project using the scientific method. You can see as the octocopter is ascending, it's dragging that paracord with it. Looks really neat, kind of cool. We got it up to 400 feet. We dropped the paracord, everything went as planned. We went ahead and we released both the parachutes that the octocopter was carrying at the time. And they both fell to the ground perfectly. We were able to time those as a preliminary. It wasn't really part of the data gathering process. Everything worked and we at that point went ahead and took one of our solos up so that we could film the actual dropping of the parachutes and set it up at about 390 feet so it could see the octocopter and then it could also film as we release the parachutes. I took controls of the octocopter and uh, my buddy Eric was on the uh, solo and we were all set and Joe was going to time the, the fall of the parachutes. As I approached the top of the, uh, the flight getting close to 400 feet, the paracord was coming tight. I was watching it very carefully but Eric, my buddy who was on the solo, looked up and noticed that it was getting tight and kind of panicked a little bit and screamed out very excitedly, STOP! And I did. I pulled back on the stick. And you can see in the video exactly what happened. The second I pulled back on the stick, the octocopter rolled to its left, fell rather rapidly, got tangled up in the paracord and in the parachutes. And long story short, we had a mess on the ground. A bit disappointed that we couldn't uh, use the octocopter to help Joe with the science fair project, but we weren't going to give up. We figured that we could gather the data with another of our drones that we just happened to have on site. You know, Eric had brought his racing drone out to fly around after the science fair project was done. And uh, we basically rigged it up very similar to the way we've got our fishing drone rigged up here. So if you want to take a look at this, I'm going to kind of hold it to you and try and keep it still for you. That's our release on the bottom of the drone right there. This servo right here goes left or right. As you go left, it'll, redu it'll re release this side. If you go right, it'll reverse, it'll release this side. So you can hang two items on here. This is designed for two fishing lines and fishing lures to carry your lure out well past where anybody could cast manually and drop it in the water right exactly where you want it by, by the use of this down facing camera. Whoever the fisherman was would have his goggles on and you could see, you know, if you were trying to get near a kelp or near some structure, you could see that structure as the thing went in. But this fishing release works really, really well. So we took one of them off the Octo and we put it on the Rooster racing drone. Got everything, you know, configured in the radios and got ready to work it and sure enough it worked great. We got some really good data with the two of the larger parachutes. 
Then we wanted to go to the first size down and we took off the third time, everything was going great. But the one thing the rooster doesn't have that the fishing drone does have is a down facing camera. So when Eric hit release on the parachute at 400 feet, it didn't release. And so Eric in his excitement to come back around and film the parachute as it fell, didn't realize he had a parachute attached to the bottom of his drone and went right down into the parachute, tangling in his props and causing our second crash of the day. Now we had two drones on the ground. We didn't have a third drone. So that was the end of our flying day. We went back out the next weekend with this drone right here. And because of the down facing camera, I was able to see that the parachutes in fact did release. And then Eric would take over and he would follow the, par follow the parachute down with this drone, filming the whole way down with the front facing camera. So this little drone saved the science fair project. We were able to get all the data Joe needed and we were able to do it very successfully and very carefully with this drone. At the end of the day, we were able to get Joe all the data he needed for him to compile his science fair project. And we were really happy when we found out that it is science fair, he took first place. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.